Minister of Romy gives update on his portfolio. Minister of Justice thanks DCOM for their invaluable help. And Prime Minister of St. Martin details her meeting with the Dutch State Secretary. Those are the headlines for Wednesday, January the 13th, 2021. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Pitton. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, at the Council of Ministers weekly press briefing this morning, Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Sylvia Jacobs, detailed her meeting with Dutch State Secretary of the Interior, Raymond Knops, and his delegation, along with her support staff. To update that, um, as you have, may have mentioned, uh, sorry, read in our papers or seen in our online media, that last week meetings were held with our, all with the three ministers, finance, justice, Vromi, and myself, along with our support staff, uh, with the state secretary of the Interior and Kingdom Relations, Mr. Knops, and his delegation, in a series of meetings held here at the government administration building. These meetings to update and follow up on agreements made prior to the end of 2020. The State Secretary provided an update on the status of the Coho draft legislation law, which has still not been finalized and is still awaiting advice from the Council, Kingdom Council of State, known as the uh, RVS, Raad van State. The State Secretary also confirmed that St. Martin's questions, which had been brought forward in our negotiations, were added to those of the other Caribbean Kingdom partners and will be taken along for response. The timeline expected moving forward for the handling will also include that the trajectory, this trajectory, that all parliaments within the Kingdom will be able to deliberate on this law Pre before it gets approved. So there is still opportunity for each parliament within the kingdom. This includes St. Martin having the opportunity to dissect and deliberate on this law. Throughout the negotiation process, my cabinet has sent all documents pertaining to St. Martin's country reform package to the parliament of St. Martin. And of course, updated when they were updated in the Kingdom Council of Ministers on um, December 18th, the one that was presented on December 18th. I have also kept the members of parliament updated on a regular basis, basis about the conditions agreed upon for the second and third tranches of liquidity support. Both delegations were able to convey support and eagerness to begin this process as this emphasizes that the ministries and the departments, including all workers involved, would then have the opportunity to have input into the execution thereof. The ministers were also able to outline their hopes and intentions for the projects that could fall under or would fall under the country package. The structure that will manage the execution of the country package was approved by the Council of Ministers this structure consists of the Secretary General's platform, as well as a monitoring committee, the Temporary Working Organization of St. Martin, to monitor the progress of the structural reforms, as well as to inform and update the Council of Ministers on said progress. Of course, each Secretary General is expected to, on a regular basis, meet with and update their particular minister on the parts that fit within their ministry. The TWO, the Tijdelijke Werk Organisatie or Temporary Work Organization representatives um, and the monitoring committees, as well as each ministry represented by an SG and a team, met with the representatives of the Netherlands um, in meetings on Friday, Monday and up until yesterday. Meanwhile, Minister of Justice Anna Richardson, who also updated the press on her portfolio on Wednesday morning, thanked the Department of Communication on the domestic violence videos that were produced for the month of November last, which is designated as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. 
the Minister of Justice also gave updates on the Ministry of Justice. I'd like to thank the Department of Communications for your assistance and hard work with the production of the domestic violence awareness videos. Both the video that just debuted and the previous one that aired during the month of November that gave at least two victors the opportunity to share details about their victimized, about being victimized to emerging victoriously and with the courage and the will to have a voice for others. A special thanks to the Council of Ministers, civil servants, specialists and activists that made the video what it is. Domestic violence is affecting our community and the world at large at an alarming rate. And for this reason, we are asking that the video be shared consistently throughout the year. Though the awareness of domestic violence and gender-based violence will be highlighted stronger during the month of November, the Ministry of Justice and its partners intend to be very active throughout the year, spreading awareness, improving security, and taking steps to ensure that perpetrators understand that abuse is a crime, not an excuse. I'd like to now give a few updates with regards to the Ministry of Justice. Last week, I held a meeting with Mr. Raphael Bosman and the Secretariat Director, Ms. Charna Pompier of the Integrity Chamber, together with my support staff, after sending an invitation to the board. The integrity, uh, integrity is considered one of the most important values that underpins the activities of the Ministry of Justice and its personnel. I recognize how it can affect public trust, not only in this ministry, but also in the entire government apparatus. As such, in 2021, I tend to pay closer attention to integrity issues and identify strategies on how the integrity standards can be raised throughout the Ministry of Justice and beyond. And now in news out of the island of St. Eustatius, the COVID-19 vaccine will take center stage when the Island Council of St. Eustatius meets in its first public meeting of the year this week. The meeting, which was requested by the Progressive Labour Party, PLP, is to take place on Thursday, January the 14th. Members of the Island Council are seeking information from the executive body, as well as health officials, about the recent announcement by the national government that the COVID-19 vaccine is to be administered to residents of Stacia within short. Councilman of the PLP, Clyde Von Putten, spoke to the Voice of St. Martin's News Department. We did request um, two separate meetings. Um, firstly, um, we requested a meeting of the Central Committee where we asked in the Executive Council as well as officials of the Health Department to come to the Central Committee and to give clarification and information um, pertaining to the recently announced intention of um, the national government in collaboration with the local government to have vaccines be administered to the people here on the island and connection with the COVID pandemic. Um, well, this announcement, the way it came out in the media, um, the impression is created, and I hope that is not the case, that it's something that will be mandatory. Um, we are not doing with speculation. We believe that we should get it from the horse's mouth, and therefore we have requested that meeting. In the meantime, the chairman of the Central Committee have issued a convocation for a meeting that will take place um, this coming Thursday, January the 14th. Um, it will be twofold. Um, first of all, we will have the first part of the meeting will be a closed door session because we have um, some points that are of a personal nature and the individual requested that it be closed. And the second part of the meeting um, would be dealing um, with um, that very specific request for the COVID pandemic. And at that time, we hope to get um, clarity um, from members of the executive council as well as the public health department. Then another meeting that we requested during the course of last week was an extraordinary urgent meeting of the island council. And in this meeting, uh, we asked to um, debate um, the, the housing foundation. As you know, at this point in time, there is a company by the name of Warren Lee, a Dutch housing corporation from the Netherlands that have been around here for quite a while trying to take over um, the low-income houses in Golden Rock. Our administration, um, during the period prior to when we were um, removed, had made a decision in the Island Council where we said we would sell 35 of those houses. Apparently, that was put on hold. We wanted to talk about the contract and um, the motion, um, which we presented back then, you know, to sell some of those houses. Additionally, 
we also want to talk about the, the recent decision of the government um, to have um, the land registry, the cadastra, as we know it, um, instead of the foundation which we had in place um, to administer and carry out the responsibilities for the cadastra in collaboration with St. Martin, Curacao, and others. We took note of the decision that was taken a year ago by the Netherlands to have cadastra for Bonaire Saban Station um, under the auspices of the cadastra of the Netherlands. We do not agree with this approach, but at the same point in time, we want the government to give an explanation with regards to this decision. Another point that is on the, um, the docket for discussion is the situation with the dialysis patient. This has been an issue that has been discussed for quite some time on the island. Even now, in the wake of the pandemic situation, a number of our um, 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 residents, our citizens, are in Curacao because normally we use the system in St. Martin, but I think based on the, the, the developments of COVID, then I think the health authorities and government thought it was best you know, to send them to Curacao, but it's, it's not one of the most convenient situations. And in this COVID-related item, as of January the 12th, there were 14 persons who tested positive for COVID-19 on St. Martin. However, 15 persons have recovered, bringing the total active cases to 102. The total number of confirmed cases is now 1,589. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 101 persons in home isolation. One patient is hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 27. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin has increased to 1,460. 239 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS. The Ministry of Public Health Social Development and Labor, VSA, the airport health team, in collaboration with Healthcare Laboratory St. Martin, HCLS, have tested 2,147 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, while CPS has tested 11,535 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. Minister of Health uh, Richard Pandefleck encourages all members of the community who are experiencing signs and symptoms which may be related to COVID-19 and persons who have been in close contact with a confirmed case to take advantage of the free drive-through testing as testing is available from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Monday to Friday. The testing facility is located in Point Blanche at the open lot before the harbor. And still to come, Minister of Romney gives update on his portfolio. I'll have a detail to that story and much more with SXM Daily News Return. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie Von Putten. As we continue now in more news, the Minister of Education, the Honorable Rodolph Samuel, elucidated on the education sector during the Council of Ministers' weekly press briefing this morning. The minister queried why aren't more students returning home and has therefore set up a virtual meeting with students and guidance counselors for those who want to participate. The minister also congratulated the University of St. Martin for being awarded the seat of research chair that will be shared with the University of Aruba and Curaçao. I would like to take this opportunity to ask you, when was the last time you took a moment to think about the word education? What does it mean for you? 
have you completed your education in the way you wanted? Students leave St. Martin every year to go abroad to further their education. Are these students returning to St. Martin after completing their studies? This question of students returning home was a topic of discussion last week when the countries of Curaçao, Aruba, the Netherlands and St. Martin had their consultative meeting to discuss different matters. St. Martin students in the Netherlands who are recipients of study financing are guided during their first and second year of their studies by a group of well-qualified persons. These guidance counselors are responsible for monitoring and checking on our students. On Sunday, January 17, 2021, upcoming from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., a virtual meeting will take place between these persons and St. Martin, the guidance counselors, and the work they do together with the Division of Study Financing will be some of the discussion points of the virtual meeting. The link will be made available during the week so that all who want to take part or listen to the meeting can do so. Today, I would certainly like to congratulate the University of St. Martin for being awarded the seat of a research chair that will be shared with the University of Aruba and Curaçao. This is a great thing for St. Martin and for the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport. St. Martin is being supported and USM is being supported by the Ministry in order to make sure that this event, this experience be a successful one for all who would be involved. Meanwhile, Minister of Romy, the Honorable Egbert J. Doran, also gave the press an update on his portfolio. The minister gave an update and points that were prioritized by the Ministry of Romy, which included Domain Affairs and the Department of Inspections and Infrastructure Management, who oversaw the removal of a number of containers and scrap that was removed. He elaborated further. Today, I wish to update you on the following points that are prioritized by the Ministry of Romy. The Department of Domain Affairs has worked diligently in, to minimize the administrative backlog, among other pending tasks. The department has recently closed off the year with the highest long lease collection total over the past five years. The sum collected for 2020 was over 5 million guilders. I would like to commend the team of the department for their hard work and the admirable results they were able to provide. On Thursday, January 7, 2021, the Department of Inspection together with the Department of Infrastructure Management oversaw the removal of multiple containers and abandoned scrap clutter at the pro proposed ring road area. The containers were placed in a secured location. For more, loca for more information how to retrieve these items, please contact the Department of Infrastructure Management. This is all in efforts to clean up our capital and uh, maintain the beauty. The Department of Infrastructure Management held an information session for solid waste collection public tender 2021-2026 on Friday, January 8th, which, <clears throat> which was attended by more than 30 companies and several other companies attended via the online session. The public is hereby reminded that all bids must be submitted in a closed envelope at the Office of the Ministry of Romy of Infrastructure Management on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021 at 10 a.m. All participants should be present and submit their bids prior to the time. However, please take note that due to COVID-19 procedures, tender submission is subject to change, which you will be informed accordingly. And as we continue now with more news, these two items from the police blotter. The KPSM detectives are investigating a shooting that took place on the Bladens Drive on Tuesday evening, January the 12th, 2021, around 9.30 p.m., whereby a young man received gunshot wounds to his upper body. Members of the Detective and Forensics Department were summoned to the St. Martin Medical Center after receiving information from the hospital personnel that a victim with the initials JS, 
who was brought in by friends seeking urgent medical attention from a gunshot wound that he sustained in the area of Bladen's Drive. Once medical attention was given to the victim, who was in serious but stable condition, he was able to provide a statement to the detectives. The officers searched a location on the Baden's Drive and did find indications that several shots were fired. There was blood found at the scene and the personnel of the forensics department took samples. A search was then performed in the area, but the perpetrator was not found. So far, the police does not have a clear picture of what had transpired up to now. They're asking if you or anyone you may know have information as to what actually took place. Please do not hesitate to contact the police detective department at 1721-542-2222 or the anonymous tip line on 9300, which is free of charge. You can also visit the website at www.police.com xm.sx to report a crime anonymously via the tip contact form or you can leave a private message via the Facebook page Police Force of St. Martin dash Corpse Police St. Martin if you know or suspect something. This investigation is currently ongoing and more details into what actually transpired will be provided as soon as the information becomes available. And this other item, the, per, uh, the personnel of the traffic department are also investigating a serious accident which took place on Tuesday morning, January the 12th, 2021, around 1.30 a.m. on the 80 Illich Road, which involved three vehicles. According to preliminary investigations, it appears that a gray Hyundai Creta, which was coming from the direction of the roundabout, lost control and collided with a scooter rider who was coming from the opposite direction. After being struck by the vehicle, the scooter collided in the back of a black pickup truck that was parked on the side of the road. When officers arrived at the scene, it appeared that the scooter rider and the driver of the gray Hyundai Creta had left the scene after the accident. Personnel of the traffic department are busy investigating this incident. The St. Martin Police Force is once again reminding the public that over the last few months, it has become noticeable that scooter riders and motorcycle riders leave the scene of an accident without leaving their personal information behind, which is considered a criminal offense. The police of St. Martin is again cautioning motorcycle and scooter riders about their behavior in traffic. The police department will continue to work in keeping St. Martin's roadways safe, but it is a job that cannot be done without the help of the community. In many cases, easy safety measures can be taken to prevent unnecessary accidents. Now turning to our weather forecast for January the 13th, 2021. Pockets of moisture at the lower levels of the atmosphere will cause a few showers as they move across the region. The Atlantic High Pressure Ridge will maintain a gentle to moderate wind flow and seas will remain moderate before subsiding on Thursday night. Small craft operators and sea bathers should continue to exercise caution. So the outlook through Friday midday, fair to party cloudy and breezy with passing showers possible. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, local medical doctor Michel Petit continues his talk about the COVID vaccine. And I'll have the details of that story with SXM Daily News. Innovative Banco Medico Contactless Smart Card. Your Banco Medico Smart Card is now equipped with a contactless feature for payments, so get ready to tap and go. Contactless payments are fast, easy, secure, and accepted worldwide at all Maestro enabled contactless terminals. Tap for transactions equivalent to or less than 100 NAF or the US dollar equivalent. You will receive notifications via email anytime you tap. Tap, tap, and pay fast, fast with WIB. 
For more information, visit our website at wib-bank.net. Tap and go with your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. As we continue now in other news, utility company NVGEBE is informing the general public that the electricity supply to Cold Bay, Celsius Road, and surrounding areas will be interrupted on Thursday, January the 14th, 2020, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This outage will allow GEBE to carry out the necessary upgrading to their distribution system. GEBE apologizes for the inconvenience caused by this interruption and they thank you for your understanding as they continue to improve their service to the community of St. Martin. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, in news again out of French St. Martin, local medical doctor Dr. Michel Petit, who took the opportunity recently to explain the history of vaccines to the community in light of the COVID-19 pandemic on Jean-Marc's radio program, One on One, Fair and Balance on St. Martin Radio recently, was asked if the vaccine will work for us and if there are any serious side effects of the vaccine. As a, as a medical um, doctor, um do you see any serious side effects coming out of this vaccine? Well, right now, no, because we done passed, we about four months. Don't forget you had phase two where you had people already got, you know, there's different phases. You do it in animals, you do it in, in humans, uh, phase two for maybe just a few thousands, and then you do it in phase three. With uh, So from the phase two to right now, we probably have six, seven months of, of uh, collecting data. Obviously, phase two don't have so many people. Phase three have a lot more. And in fact, this is phase four now. We're in phase four. So, um, no, they, 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 from the time they started giving it to, to volunteers to right now, there's no serious side effect. Now, all the... May, may, may I just correct myself? Yeah. There, recently, the people who have an allergic background yeah. have to be a little careful. But you have to realize, too, that any vaccines give you allergic, uh, give you a wake up anaphylactic shocks. Yeah. So that's a serious side effect, but a lot of vaccines, if not all of them, could give you that. Yeah, but so you, get, you get some type of allergic reaction. Reaction, yeah. Rash so, so, or... so a few people, they had in Alaska, they had maybe one or two in the States, one or two in England. They but had... does that mean that you, 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 the vaccine will not work? No, no, no. In fact, they think that the, the allergic reaction there is a small little chemical that they're using when they're wrapping the, the fatty t membranes around the, the messenger RNA. That, that is the cause of that. But this is something that you find in foods and everything. That's why when you eat the food, you get to so. We have a next reaction, and they're saying in England, they vaccine hundreds of thousands of persons, but yet they still with a total lockdown. What do you think about that? I think that if, if England right now with this new variant didn't lock down, they would have, they would have overwhelmed the, 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 the hospital system because even though, uh, you know, we don't know, it, it doesn't seem to be more deadly, but Instead of having a hundred thousand people with a with a thousand hospital, and you get two hundred people with two thousand in the hospital. Your hospital cannot the hospital system in the and then you can now is completely saturated, and they probably putting people on stretchers, not enough oxygen. So why a lockdown? Because they want to try and stop it with a, until the vaccine gets to the seventy percent uh, people vaccinated to stop the, the the disease from progressing. L listening to you and in, in, in your reaction to that, that that means that when a government decide to lock down, it means that the hospital system is saturated? Or, or, or threatening too, yes, because then you, you know people are going to die with lack of care because you only have so much of beds, so, much, so many nurses, so many respirators and things like that. And with that, viewers, it brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie from Pritton, thanking you for tuning in this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you so much for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.